This video will explain the paper, Improved Consistency Regularization for GANs, enforcing consistent predictions of deep neural networks when taking the same image and passing it through a semantic preserving transformation has led to many recent gains in unsupervised representation learning, such as unsupervised data augmentation, fixed match, and SimCLR, to name a few. This paper builds on previous work enforcing the discriminator to predict the same class label for real augmented images to also enforcing the consistency on the generated images as well as then propagating that down into the source vector z to the generator as well. If you are training your own generative adversarial network models, I think this is a great tool to know about because it is easy to understand in comparison to some of these other advances in GANs and it's easy to integrate into existing workflows. This video will explain the paper, Improved Consistency Regularization for GANs. Consistency regularization has been a really popular idea to strengthen the training of deep neural networks by requiring them to be consistent on their predictions, such as predicting the same class label of an image after it goes through a transformation like rotating at 90 degrees, for example. This paper builds on previous work applying this idea of consistency regularization to training GANs, achieving new state-of-the-art results, and I also think it's really interesting to look at because it's an easy technique to kind of stack on top of existing uh, GAN techniques, and it's also an easy to understand kind of addition to the framework compared to things like spectral normalization or these other kind of ideas that have come out in the GAN space. These are some examples of generated images from the improved consistency regularization GAN presented in this video and in this paper, as well as the baseline consistency regularization GAN. You can see that looking through the images of the two different GAN models, it's hard to tell really the performance improvement, except for finding some maybe outliers in the previous versions, and then kind of, you know, having like an overall view of it. But this is why it's so important to have these automated metrics like the FID scores, the inception score, or the classification accuracy scores. As these GANs get really good at generating these images, you need these automated metrics in order to compare them with one another. Consistency regularization is a rising idea in unsupervised, semi-supervised, this kind of representation learning techniques in order to enforce deep neural networks to be consistent with their predictions after a data point has been augmented. This uh, image from the fixed match paper is probably the best visualization of this. You have this unlabeled data point, and then you weakly augment it by maybe doing something like an adding noise or like horizontally flipping it, and then you compare it with a strongly augmented image. So this is all sorts of different cases of like the uh, SIM CLR framework of taking a data point and then augmenting it, and then comparing the predictions of the augmented images, and then comparing that with other data points in order to form this self-supervised learning task. And also we see in the framework unsupervised data augmentation that adds structure to this semi-supervised learning framework by enforcing it to have a similar distribution of class level predictions on augmented images as well. So it's a rising idea that is adding more structure to the training of deep neural networks, and now it's being applied to stabilize GAN training, which is really hard because you're trying to train these two networks simultaneously, the generator and the discriminator. One of the biggest debates in artificial intelligence research is about how much prior knowledge should be injected into these models and how general they are. So that was interesting to read this quote from the paper, that the intu intuition behind these techniques is to encode into model training some prior knowledge that the model should produce consistent predictions given input instances and their semantics preserving augmentations. So it's interesting to think of this kind of idea of having the data augmentations and injecting this prior knowledge that these augmentations aren't changing the semantics of it and using that kind of way injecting priors into these deep neural network models. First, we'll look at initial efforts to integrate consistency regularization in GANs and some of the problems that arose from this and how this new paper, Improved Consistency Regularization of GANs, is going to improve on this uh, learning paradigm. So the original idea is to take the real samples and augment them as they go through the discriminator to add more structure only to the real sample. So the generative adversarial network from the discriminator's perspective is classifying between these real uh, data points that are sampled from the original data set and then uh, data points produced by the generator network. One of the problems with the original CR GAN formulation is the discriminator doesn't know if these features are coming from the real data set or from the data augmentation transformations. So for example, if you apply this black rectangle cutout to the image, the discriminator has no idea if these black rectangles are a result of the original data set or if this is the data augmentation. So a quote from the paper is that one key problem with the original CR GAN is that the discriminator might mistakenly believe that the augmentations are the actual features of the target data set since these augmentations are only performed on the real images. And if that's what happens, then guess what the generator will do? It will start to copy the data augmentations in the images that it's producing because this is what will satisfy the real versus fake objective from the perspective of optimizing the generator network. So as described, these are some examples of the CR GAN artifacts. Whatever data augmentation is used in order to produce this uh, consistency regularization loss will also be produced by the generator as a result of this dual optimization of the two neural networks that are uh, competing with each other in this way. So it's interesting to see, you can visualize this easily with the cutout augmentation but with more subtle geometric transformations like rotations or horizontal flipping, it would be really hard to catch these artifacts in the generated images. 
Another paper, uh, the StyleGAN2 model, is also looking at how to remove these introduced artifacts that are a result of their normalization layers in the case of the original StyleGAN1 paper. So it's interesting to see these GAN papers that are looking at addressing what is causing these artifacts or these like odd things in the generated images. The first idea to address this is very intuitive and easy to understand. Simply augment the generated images as well, and so now you have this consistency regularization on the real images as well as the generated images. This ablation plot shows the performance gain by doing this balanced consistency regularization with respect to a vanilla version of it where you don't do any of this consistency regularization at all. I mean, you see going up this, uh, going to the right of this would be only weighting it on the uh, real consistency regularization term. So only adding a loss based on the uh, data points that come from the original data set that you provided the generative adversarial network. So this ablation shows, you know, the gains achieved by having the loss function for both the uh, samples that come out of the generator and being consistent with predicting on that, as well as the original data points. The next idea that's introduced is latent consistency regularization. So the idea here is that the generator takes this input, this random vector z that's sampled from some distribution. So now what we want to do is with the random vector z, we also will add some noise perturbation to it, producing another random vector z, and then as these each go through the generator, they'll produce two different images. So the idea now is that we want to be consistent with our predictions on the images after they have been produced by this original random vector and then the uh, slightly modified random vector. But the idea here further is that if you don't uh, provide any additional structure to this loss function, the generator will just produce the exact same image twice to make the task easier for the discriminator, which in turn makes the overall loss function easier for the generator because they're doing this like joint optimization, dual neural network training. So the idea is to further uh, structure the loss function by having the generator try to produce as different images as possible and having some loss function based on how different these images are. This ablation study shows looping through different hyperparameter values for the strength of the noise that's added to that input vector z with the latent consistency regularization, then the strength of the loss on the generator and the strength of the loss on the discriminator. Looking at this video of the StyleGAN2 interpolation uploaded by Robert Luxemburg on YouTube and linked in the description of this video, you see that the, one of the key ideas of the StyleGAN2 model is how well it can interpolate through these latent vectors z. So in this space, what you're doing is you're slightly changing that input vector z, and as a result, you don't have these uh, dramatic differences in the generated image. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do this kind of animation because the images would be so different from each other, it would just look like you're flipping through a random slideshow or something like that. So I think it's interesting to see how they're adding this structure in the can, uh, improved consistency regularization GAN, where they want the generator to uh, produce as different images as possible with respect to changes in the input vector z because other GAN models like the style GAN2 does actually the opposite of that, trying to make it so the generator doesn't make these sharp changes in the images with respect to changing the input vector. Before we present the results of the improved consistency regularization GAN model, it's important to know the difference between unconditional and conditional generative adversarial networks. So the idea of unconditional generative adversarial networks is where you're just sampling the, all the real samples from that original data set and there's no extra modification. The idea in conditional GANs is that you add the class label to each of the data points. So say you sample a dog from the data set, you're going to also inject some embedding vector or some, there are tons of ways of doing this conditioning that have been developed over the years of generative adversarial network research, but you basically are putting this prior information into the model that you're looking at a dog, you're looking at a cat, you're looking at an airplane. There's extra information that makes the generative adversarial network task much easier actually in practice. So it's interesting to think of the gains in unconditional generative adversarial networks because it's kind of on par with this unsupervised learning idea. If you don't need to do this uh, injection of the class label to get better images and also in turn better representations for representation learning, such as say taking the you know, representation learned by the discriminator and then stacking a linear classifier on top of it and doing image net classification or fine tuning it for semi-supervised learning, transfer learning onto some other problem, all these miscellaneous ways of making use of representation learning algorithms. These are the results of unconditional generative adversarial networks applied to the CIFAR-10 dataset with the DC-GAN architecture. One of the reasons I really like this paper, Improved Consistency Regularization for GANs, is that it's easy to stack this kind of uh, an extension onto these previous architectures like the DC-GAN framework, or later we'll look at the uh, ResNet-style GAN, which is where you have the ResNet architecture compared to just like a deep convolutional network architecture. That's where it gets the name DC-GAN. So you see the comparison between uh, the original consistency regularization paper and how it outperforms like the Wasserstein GAN and these miscellaneous other ways of structuring the loss function. And then you see the improvements, the uh, balanced consistency regularization, which is where you do the, uh, the consistency regularization in the uh, generated images as well as the real images, and then the uh, implementation of this in the latent space as well. So then we see a similar trend in the using the ResNet style architecture, and then we see the trend as well on the DC GAN with the Celeb A dataset, showing that this generalizes across datasets 
and it's not just on CIFAR 10 that you find these uh, gains. This table summarizes the results of doing unconditional image synthesis on these different data sets, CIFAR 10 and Celebe, with the different architectures DCGAN or the ResNet. In this case, you see a bigger performance gain achieved on the DCGAN than the ResNet, which I think is an interesting trend because you might imagine stacking this on top to on top of your existing GAN framework in order to make uh, use of using a shallower model with say less parameters. So you might imagine that if this was like an efficient net and this was image net, image net, image net, you might imagine that you'd have more gains on ResNet than the efficient net. So it might be a way of adding more structure in case you have limited computational resources, but you're still trying to use the generative adversarial network framework for your data set. These are the results of doing conditional image synthesis on the ImageNet and CIFAR 10 datasets. You see a, uh, a better result on doing the uh, CIFAR 10 generation with the uh, conditioning compared to the unconditional uh, image synthesis. And also using a bigger architecture, the big GAN model, compared to the uh, ResNet. The big GAN model is a more complex model that adds these uh, self-attention layers into it and miscellaneous other uh, architectural differences to just using a ResNet in the generator and discriminator. So you see the performance gain by using this new technique compared to the previous uh, algorithm implementing consistency recognition in GANs and the big GAN and self-attention GAN models. The authors also note that they might expect to achieve better performance if they use the big GAN deep architecture compared to just using the big GAN with the improved consistency regularization algorithm. So the idea behind big GAN deep is it isn't just like kind of how these uh, like transformers scale up, like how the difference between GPT-2, Megatron LM, and then Turing NLG is really just how many of the same block you're like stacking on top of each other. Big GAN deep is like a complete rewrite of kind of the way that they're doing these uh, residual blocks. It's a more complicated difference between Big GAN and Big GAN deep. Actually, Big GAN deep, although it has more layers, it also has fewer parameters. So it's interesting to just think of that little difference and how they expect to see uh, better performance with better architectures because you can just kind of stack this on top of other kind of like uh, advancements in generative adversarial network research. Thanks for watching this explanation of improved consistency regularization for GANs. We've seen a lot of uh, recent advances with respect to enforcing these consistent predictions in semi-supervised learning like fixed match or the SimCLR algorithm. And it's really interesting to see this applied to GANs as well and the further refinements on making this work even better. I think it's a really interesting technique as well because it's easy to understand unlike some of these other techniques in GANs like weight demodulation or having this kind of like path length normalization in style GAN2 or like spectral normalization, which are a little harder to wrap your head around than something like this, which is you know pretty straightforward to understand and then implement, and then you can stack it on top of other things that you're doing with the generative adversarial networks. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.